Eddie, can you hear me? Oh. Hello? Yeah, yeah, we need an ambulance. What? Um, 081 503 7731. I mean, it's the Queen Vic pub, Albert Square, Walford. Uh, one man. Well, head injury, I think. Yes. Yes, he's unconscious. Oh, look, just get it, will you? I don't know. It, it was some sort of accident. Oh, quickly, please. throughout the night. Hold on, Eddie. Please hold on. I've got help. It's on its way, Eddie. They're coming. They're coming right now. Oh, please don't die on me. Eddie! <laughs> Oh, well, well, what about that lot? She was sleeping through that lot. Is she banging on the wall with this? I woke her up. Oh, it's what woke me up, no. Oh, well, it's not as if the music's that good. No, it's a bit like that ice cream commercial, isn't it? Yeah. I'll tell you what it's like, Pauline. It's like a cat fight. That's what it's yes, like. Yes, Arthur. Yes, it's a flaming liberty this time of night. Yes, Arthur, you're right. And someone should put a stop to it. You're right about that and all. Exactly. So why don't you put this on instead of banging on the wall with it? Then you can go round the corner and tell them to turn it down properly. Is this a private party or can anyone join in? Yeah, listen, if you've really got a place out, I've got that motorhead CD upstairs. Now that I can sleep to the police got not fat, it's Ali's coming in tonsils. What's the matter? Oi, Eddie, you hear me? Yeah, yeah, it's all right, Arthur. All right, very far from all right. Yeah, OK, OK. Very far from all right. We might family have woken up at this time. Yeah, well, night. we've turned it down now, as you can hear. We've got to go to Leon C in the morning. Yeah, I hope you have a very nice trip. Oh, great. As if we haven't got enough to put up with you two. Now we've got a wide 5 0 disturbing everybody's kit. Hold on, Eddie. Please. Just hold on. What's going on? There must be some trouble at the bit. Yeah, but a shout. What trouble do you get when a pub shut? Sharon? Sharon? How long's he been unconscious? I, I don't know. Ten minutes? Half an hour? About a quarter of an hour, I think. <coughs> How did it happen? What? What was he hit with, love? I, I just found him. What, a chair? A table? Someone's fist? It could be important. Like I said, I, I just found him. So I tried to put him on his side so he didn't choke. <laughs> Give some space, would you like? Ready, Jerry? Yep. I just want to know, is he going to be all right? Look, ask the doctors when we get down to the hospital. They'll be able to tell you more. You want me to come with you? It would help. They'll need to know anything you could tell them. Yeah, of course. Sleep in there, you know. Thank God we're going away for a couple of days. And Shell, you should be coming with us with Vicky and all. Oh, you tell me what is going on. The problem with you, brother, is you don't appreciate culture. There's nothing you want to tell me. Such as? Well, such as why you're trying to drown out Conkle for starters. It's your new job. Inspector for noise abatement. 
And whether you know about St Botherin, the Vic tonight? How could I? I haven't been anywhere near the Vic tonight. So you wouldn't know why Eddie Roy's just been carted off to hospital then? He's probably been drinking his own beer. Oh, that's funny, that is. Look, I turned this diary up because I couldn't sleep. I still can't sleep. But if you prefer, I can have a couple of frames and a snooker hall instead. All oh, right, I'll come with you. Suit yourself. OK, hold on. Just get me jacket. I just want to know if he's going to be all right. Please. Can you take a seat? We'll get back to you as quickly as we can. Yeah, but I... Look, please, just take a seat. Reception will need to get some details from you. I just want to know if... Yes! You all right? Yeah, all right. All right, yeah, fine. Hey, your missus know you're out? Shh. Don't drink too much of the stuff. Come on, it's fine. I'll never with that angle, Gary. You got more chance of putting that cactus. I always thought Jimmy White had hair. No tables. What? That is free for half an hour. I can't wait half an hour. I want to go now. Well, we can have a drink first, can't we? Eh? Eh? Relax a bit. Come. On. That's all right, Gary and Tony. Finish having your lads. We're just setting up for another one. Well, I tell you what. Then why don't we have a game of doubles? I thought we were just having a quiet game tonight, eh? Exactly. What could be quiet in a game of doubles with these two? You're the cocky get Grant Mitchell. Do you know that? Just call it an act of charity, Gary. I'll even show you which end of the queue to use. You feeling that confident, Grant? Maybe you'd like to make it more interesting. Oh, yeah, how interesting? Say 50 on the side. Look, I told you, we're just having a quiet game tonight, all right? It'd be even more interesting if we made it a ton. You what? Just relax. I'm not feeling lucky tonight. It's not such a bad idea, you know, Shell. Yeah, I don't know why we didn't think of it before. How anyone can sleep round here with a racket that goes on most nights, I don't know. Oh. Those two idiots next door bothering the square. Yeah. I tell you, Shell, a little holiday in Leon here do you and Vicky the world of good. Mm. Are you listening to us, Shell? Yeah, yeah, I'm listening. Yeah, yeah, it's a good idea, Mum. It's a bit short notice, though, isn't it? But I bet he wouldn't mind you two coming. No, she'd love you to come. Yeah, it's Liberty Hall down here, always has been. Well, the barrier. Yeah, she'd like you to be there. I always just up my plans for tomorrow. I'm supposed to be seeing Clyde and Kofi. Yeah, but you could always put them off, couldn't you? Who asked you? Well, I was only thinking of Vicky. Yeah, well, I'm only thinking of Eddie. I'm sorry, but I don't want to go anywhere or do anything until I know that Sharon and Eddie are OK. W Wolf for General. Sorry. Head injury. Anyone with him? Do you want me to take over? Why? Reckon I'm going to bottle it? No, you just seem to be having a bit of difficulty with your cue in action, that's all. What trouble? Come on, let's get our money and have a drink, eh? I want a word with you. You two forgot your sporting manners, have you? Well, don't we even get a chance to get our stake back? Or don't you reckon I'm getting that lucky two games running? You heard the odd couple? I'll leave it out. Look, we can't ignore fighting talk like that, now, can we? Is there any news? Just take a seat, OK? We'll tell you something as soon as we know. I just want to know if he's going to be OK. Are you a relative? No. Girlfriend? I work for him. Look, you must be able to tell me something. He's been in there half an hour. Please, just tell me what's happening to him. Mr Royal's being prepared for theatre. Operation. Which doesn't mean there's anything to be alarmed about at this stage. Well, you're not just opening him up for the sake of it, are you? Why never? Look, please, just take a seat and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. I promise. Miss Watts? Can I have a word, please? Hey, try using this end, Grant. You might hit something with that. So you were saying you'd like to up the ante? Yeah, I wouldn't mind. In fact, I wouldn't mind doubling it. No problem. Double it is, then. I do hope you know what you're doing. Adding them into a false sense of security. Yeah, well, I hope so. Because if we lose this one, we're down 300 quid. 
And I don't know about you, but I don't carry that sort of dough tucked behind my ear on. But we ain't going to lose, are we? I told you. I feel lucky tonight. This ain't got anything to do with you, Lord. Miss Ross. I didn't even phone the police, did I? No. I just phoned for an ambulance. I don't even know why you're here. Hey, hey, hey. Calm down. Look, I'm not about to march you into a closed room and shine a light in your face, you know. I'm only trying to find out what happened. It's Sharon, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Well, you obviously don't realise, Sharon, but we get alerted to all emergency calls. Don't follow all of them up, mind you. I mean, we wouldn't follow up a cat trapped up an oak tree, for example. <laughs> but we would follow up a man with the kind of injuries your friend's got. So, start again, shall we? I'm Jimmy Buckwell. I'm a sergeant at Walford Station, and, uh, and maybe you'd like to tell me how your mate ended up in a state like that. I don't know. OK. So who does? Who else was involved? What makes you think anyone else was involved? <laughs> it's what they call a process of elimination in police college. Though anyone else would probably call it simple common sense. Number one, I don't have you down for this. You just don't look that vicious. Number two, there's no way those injuries are self-inflicted, either. Well, no one could hit themselves that hard, could they? So, that means someone else must be responsible. It's probably just an accident. I was clearing up in the pub. I heard a noise, I went through to the hall, and there he was. Uh-huh. So what had he done? Tripped over an ashtray? He must have fallen down the stairs. The ambulance report didn't mention finding him near any stairs. What's happened? He's in theatre now, so I can give you a few minutes. All right. What's going on? One game more. Makes it more interesting. That's not what I'm talking about. Look, I was half asleep in the first game. That's not the reason we just lost. Because you wanted to make it more interesting. We lost because you're queuing like Donald Duck. So I had an off game who doesn't? Ask Steve Davis. Now I want to know how you did it. Did what? Hey, you hurt your hand as badly as that. It ain't that bad. It's bad enough to make you miss a load of shots out there, wasn't it? <sighs> I'm nulling them into a false sense of security. All right. So how did you do it, then? I caught it in the car door. Oh, that was careless of you. I knew I shouldn't have that last point. I thought you said you didn't go in the Vic. Who said I was drinking in the Vic? Now, listen, right? Look, we got big money to win. Let's go and win it, eh? Mr Royal suffered various injuries. Some broken bones, some cuts. But the most serious injury is a ruptured artery just underneath his skull. And at the moment, the doctors are operating to remove a blood clot that's formed as a result of that rupture. They can do that? It's a delicate operation, but we've done it before. And Eddie's going to be OK? Oh, we hope so. <sighs> but it's a very serious injury. It's been diagnosed in time, so that's in his favour. But we can't predict exactly how he'll come out of it. At least not yet. Yeah, but he's, he's not going to die, nothing like that, is he? Well, we'll know much more in about an hour or so. Yeah, but if I'm he... sorry, there's really nothing more I can tell you at this stage. You say you're not a relative. I work for him, in his pub. Does he have any relatives living close by that you know of? Well, he's got a dad, but he went to Ireland for Easter. I don't know how to get hold of him. Is Mr. Royal Catholic? What? With you saying Ireland, is he a practising Roman Catholic? Well, what's that got to do with anything? Doesn't matter. I'll get someone to fetch you a cup of tea, shall I? While you wait. Yeah, thanks. Oh, by the way, Switchboard passed on a message for you from a Michelle Fowler. Yeah. She wants to know if you'd like her to come down, sit with you while you wait. Well, not till we got some news. That's why you want to know about Eddie. You want to know if he's a Catholic. You think he's going to die, don't you? Ready to give up, are we? No, we're waking up, ain't we? Oh, very nice, Phil. But we're still 50 points ahead. There's only 43 on the table. I think you're stuffed. <laughs> oh. oh. I'll make that 46 ahead now. Still only 43 on the table. And you work that all out without using your toes. Up you go, bruv. Show them what you can do, eh?
We do need a snooker, you know. Hey. Shut it. What's he doing? I said shut it, right? It's your funeral. Now I make it, you definitely can't catch up, Phil. Which means you owe us 300 quid. You'll have to take a marker. Tomorrow. Hey, Phil. Your brother's a nut, though. Well, what's he on? Well, he must be on something, or he's finally flipped. The Do way you want to slap? All right, all right. Gary didn't mean nothing by it. Whatever's up with him tonight, Phil, it's not our fault, OK? Come on. Let's get our hands into it, eh? Seems he's got internal bleeding in the skull, four broken ribs, bruises, cuts. He's generally been knocked about. You say Mr. Royal isn't married? Oh. Rules out option number three, then. He didn't leave the top off the toothpaste. Look, I've told you everything I know. Oh, Sharon. If I tell my super what you've just told me, he's going to look at me like I'm... You know, like I'm looking at you right now. There is something else you should think about, too. This lot wasn't a lucky punch, you know. Your mate Eddie took a real beating. And in my book, a man who can inflict damage like that really shouldn't be walking around. So, why don't I go get us a cup of tea, hey? Oh, we are going to get the story, you know, Sharon. Most likely from Eddie when he comes round. But if he doesn't, then it won't be a police sergeant on the worst shift of the week asking you questions. So it might be easy if you cooperate from the off. So how's Eddie? They're operating on him now. Operating? He's going to be all right, isn't he? Worried, are you? So who was it? You know who it was. Look, Sharon... Just I... go away. What have you told the old Bill? You don't even care about Eddie, do That you? is not the point. I ain't told him nothing. At least not yet. But Sharon, you Well, can't... I may not have much choice. That cop was right. If Eddie don't pull through, you're not going to keep the lid on this. You know that, don't you? Besides, maybe I should talk. Maybe that cop was right again. Maybe that brother of yours really is better off behind bars. Sharon, there's things you don't understand. Oh, too right I don't. You weren't there, Phil. You didn't see what he was like. Just leave me alone. I'm not in the mood for polite chat. Oh, what's up? Fancy a brew? It's from a machine, but I've tasted worse. What's this? New training methods. Cheers. Oh, been in a spot of bother, have you? I cut my hand in a car door. Oh, such a lot of people having accidents round here tonight. Not a crime, is it? That's what I've been trying to find out. Believe in coincidence, do you? Got this one golden rule in life. I don't believe in words I can't spell. Hmm. Well, there's a funny one for you anyway. You're from Albert Square, aren't you? Yeah, I checked on your form. Well, there's someone else in here from Albert Square, too. And he's had an accident and all. Small world. Oh, it gets stranger. This bloke who's from your neck of the woods looks as if he's just been hit by something hard. And you, you look as if you've just hit something hard. This bloke made some kind of complaint, has he? This bloke may not get much chance. Last I was told, he'd be lucky to speak again. Maybe even breathe again. You probably know the place. Queen Victoria. Everything all right? I told you how long you're going to be. Caught his hand in the door of the van. <laughs> I was just told it was a car. Well, same thing. Not very observant, are you? No, according to him, it was definitely a car. Yeah, well, I meant a car, didn't I? I always say one thing when you mean something else, do you? Let's get out of here, shall we? Just said... Yeah, I said, let's go, yeah? Uh, 
know the young lady in reception, do you? She's just a friend. Her friends do seem to be in the wars tonight, don't they? Listen, are you questioning that's for something official? Because if you are, I want a brief. No, nothing official. Right then. At least not yet. Right, well, we'll just have to see what Mr. Royal says when he comes round, won't we? Always assuming he does come round, of course. Miss Watts, the surgeon's finished operating on Mr. Royal now. Could he have a word with you? an operation, but they're keeping him in, but he's going to be all right. An operation? Why? Yeah, right. I'm off. See Ideal send a detective round to talk to him in the morning. Will they? Yeah, well, it's their case, really, you know. <laughs> no point in me hanging around. Terror. Eddie had an accident. An accident? Must have been. Sharon? Can't be sure, mind you, but it must be something like that. I was clearing up, and I heard this noise, so I went through to the hall. And there was Eddie at the bottom of the stairs. So he fell down the stairs? I'm only telling you how I found it. All right, Sharon. All right. Anyway, I was thinking on the way back, I'd better get onto the brewery first thing, tell him what's happened. Yeah, yeah. Sally needs to sort out the orders and that, of course, but if Eddie's only going to be in hospital a week or so, I can probably manage. Better see Clyde too. See if he can do a few extra shifts. Maybe Cathy will help out and all, eh? Call on the old community spirit. All hands on deck in a crisis. Mm. You uh, better get onto the brewery as well, asking for some more glasses. Because they probably got smashed when Eddie fell down the stairs. Yeah. I suppose they must have. Me a few nights until Eddie gets back. Yeah, sure. I'll just go and get some clothes. Okay. It's not like you, though, not want to stay on your own. It's Grant, isn't it? It's Grant that you're frightened of. He did all that to Eddie. I already told you. Yeah, I know. You caught your hand in the door of the van. Or was it the door of the car? Or was it the door of the flat? Listen, that old Bill will never bleed your story, and no one else will neither. Now, there's going to be trouble, Grant. And it's not just you and Eddie. Sharon's involved too, remember? Sharon won't say anything. That's not the point. We've got to get a story straight just in case she does. But the first thing is, you've got to tell me what really happened. Grant asked to speak to Eddie. Said he wanted to sort a few things out. What things? I don't know. Maybe he'd had a bad pint, or maybe he wanted to flog a few cassettes or something. Oh, all right, go on. Well, next thing, I'm clearing up and I hear this row. Grant and Eddie yelling at each other. And Eddie, he tries to chuck Grant out and... And then what? Me and Eddie had a fight. What about? I don't know. Oh, come off it, Grant. It's the truth. I don't know. I know it was down to me. But I don't know how. I remember going into the Vic. Seeing Eddie, waiting to talk to him. That's what it was meant to be a talk. Oh, I believe you. And then the next thing I remember, Eddie was on the floor. There was all this blood everywhere. And Sharon was screaming at me. All right, all right, calm down, will you, eh? Phil! Happened again, hasn't it? <laughs> he wouldn't stop. 
He just kept hitting him, hitting him all the time. And when Eddie was on the floor just lying there, he just kept hitting and hitting it's and... It's all right, Sharon, it's all right, Meg. No, it isn't, Michelle. If I hadn't been there, if I hadn't managed to get him off, Eddie got him away. Eddie wouldn't just be in hospital now. He'd be dead. Five minutes. Eddie. You know the form. Need a few details from you. About last night. We need to know what happened. Murdoch Mysteries at 2.20, your afternoon mystery here on Drama. Classic EastEnders continues next.